Hello there, my name is Kendra Petrie, and I am the director of the Flathead Valley Mask Makers in northwestern Montana. We provide masks for the uh, majority of the Flathead Valley, as well as many smaller communities all over Montana. And today I'm going to be showing you the basic accordion pleated mask that we use for our patterns. Uh, this will be a full tutorial with two variations that our group is currently using. So before you get started, you want to make sure that you have everything that you need, which would be something for your ear straps. Here I have eighth inch elastic cut at 11 inches. The alternative that we use is a stretchy band made of cotton lycra or something similar also known as just like t-shirt fabric. And if you have one that's long enough, you can actually just use one. You might need two, it just depends on your length. <clears throat> These can be cut at 30 inches if you're going with two to tie above and at the back of your neck, or if you just want one, it needs to be cut closer to 45 inches. You also want something for a nose wire. This is what we're currently using. It's a fairly small gauge copper wire that's plastic coated and we curl the ends. It needs to, whatever you use, needs to be able to bend easily but also stay molded to the face and not just flop open and you can see how this kind of keeps its shape well. I also have snips, optional but helpful, pins or clippies depending on what you prefer. You'll need something to pull through the earpieces through the channels at the end. You can just use a safety pin or I also really like these nice elastic tools. This one's gigantic though and wouldn't work, but you get the idea where you can just like thread it through this end and just pull it through really fast. Then you need your fabric. So what we have is with both types of patterns, you need two pieces that are two and a half inches by four inches and these make your side channels. Then you need either one piece, this is seven and a half inches wide by 15 inches long, and this will be folded in half for the mask. Option number two would be using two pieces so that the inside of your mask is a different color. And so here we have seven and a half by nine inches with the inside being seven and a half by six inches long. I'll show you the beginning for both of these, but once the pattern um, kind of syncs up and there's no differences, then I'll just switch to using one. So the very first thing that you want to do is finish the top edge of your pieces. When you have two, that means you just need to finish off one and one like this. However, if you're using the long 15 inch piece, you need to finish both the top and the bottom. This can be done using a zigzag stitch, an overlock stitch, or a serger. And I'm going to be using my serger. My serger is an uh, Juki MO654DE and I love this machine. It is wonderful. And the sewing machine that I'm using is a Husqvarna Viking Jade. Also a great machine. So these ones I've already finished, if you can see there. Okay, so that just gives us a nice edge and that is all we're doing with the serger. The rest is all sewing machine. So then what you need to do is lay your pieces right sides together. <clears throat> okay, so that the tops match. And then you're going to be sewing a seam from the edges one and a half inches in on both sides. This leaves an opening in the middle for what will become our filtration pocket in the mask. 
this should be at least half an inch seam allowance. So go half an inch down and then one and a half inches in on both sides. You do want to either backstitch or lock your seams on the inside part. If you um, don't have a little grid on your machine, you're going to need to mark this with some sort of marking tool, but I know exactly where mine need to be. So I just hold my finger there. And then to save time, you don't need to cut. Just move on to your next mark. Okay. So here is what it looks like. You want to snip here and here just to release the pocket. Okay, so there are two seams with the pocket in between. I'm going to do the same thing with our big piece, except this time we're going to just fold right sides together and this is going to immediately make our mask piece into a loop. But the stitching is going to be just the same half inch seam allowance in from the edges, one and a half inches on both sides. stitch at the very ends at this point. We won't need that until a little bit later when we kind of do things that hold everything together. Now it's up to you if you want to trim all of your edges now you can but you don't have to. It's gonna save you time if you don't do it right now. Okay so now with both masks what we're going to do is we're going to take those edges, those nice finished edges, fold both of them down and iron along this my little makeshift ironing board set up in here. My sewing room is teeny tiny, so I can't fit my full ironing board when I'm doing work in the room. Okay, there's one. Let's do it with the other one as well. And I'm just folding that seam allowance down so that our edges are down like that. And then iron along that edge. Pressing is going to make your life so much easier on this project. I know it's not everybody's favorite thing, but I highly recommend it. <clears throat> okay, so now with the two-piece mask, you simply open it up and you are going to make two seams, two top stitching seams right along each of these sides, leaving our pocket open. These can be fairly close, like an eighth of an inch or even closer. Okay, so now we've top stitched along both sides, just like that. Now here is where it's a little bit trickier when you're using just one color. So we've done the same thing, but now we're going to have to turn it right side out. And depending on your machine, here's where it can be a little bit tricky. You still need to top stitch along our seam, but we're in a, in a loopy here, right? So what you have to do is really watch underneath, making sure that you're pulling the fabric out of the way so that it doesn't like get sewn in on itself. And just keep pulling it out of the way as you go. I find the second side easier because all that fabric's already kind of squished out of the way. Yeah. 
Okay, same result in the end, it just takes maybe another second or two. So now we have our pocket. Okay, now the only other thing that is different is now we need to match the bottoms of our two color mask and just sew a simple straight seam across to form this one into the loop. So from here, I'm just going to switch to using the one color because the rest of the instructions are all the same. Now what you're going to do is, let's see if I can move this a little bit. There we go. Okay, we're going to fold so that our filtration pocket is about a half inch below the top of the inside of our mask. So I actually will show you that on the other one so you can see what the color difference looks like. So the shorter piece, the six and a half inch piece is going to be on the inside like this and it'll kind of give you a border, but that allows you to quickly identify what's the inside of your mask. Okay, so once you have it folded like this, you're going to press it really quick. Now there are a couple of options when making pleats. Some people make pleat boards, which allow you to just slide the fabric in and help you pleat it quickly. But this is a little tip that I really like that um, makes things go a lot faster and neater as well. So what you're gonna do now is lay it so that the filter slot, the inside of your mask is facing up. And we're just going to make folds of about one inch, fold, 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 so that you have four folds with a little bit hanging out of the bottom and you're basically just turning it into a little fabric burrito. And now you're going to press this really, really good so that we can get some nice sharp lines in it. When I'm doing a lot of masks at a time, I'll actually just set my iron on it for a minute and fold the next one as I'm getting ready, lift the iron off and stick the next one under it. I mean, maybe it's not recommended to just leave your iron down, but it works fast and that's what works for me right now. Using this method, I can make a mask in about eh, six or seven minutes, um, which is a vast improvement from <laughs> when I started all of this. Um, I don't know, when I made my first mask a little over a month ago, it took me almost half an hour to figure out so I am just loving finding um, time-saving tips. Okay, so now we have our little burrito all flattened out. And if you open it up, we have these beautiful creases that give us lines as to where we need to put our um, accordion folds. So I'll show you that in just a second, but first we're gonna take our little pieces that make the side channels. And what you're gonna do is just fold a little teeny tiny bit, eh, about a quarter of an inch, and on the top and bottom, and go ahead and give that a quick press as well. I found you can totally do this with pairs, just stick them on top of each other and fold them both down at once. Anything to cut seconds off of this mask making process because we are trying to get out so many masks to frontline workers. I have about 100 volunteers sewing under me right now and it has just been such an honor and blessing like seeing how they're working and uh, just doing incredible things. Okay. So now we have this all folded down. And this is going to be your guide for how big you want the finished mask length to be. So you can just lay it down next to your pleats if you want. And now I'm going to skip the top fold, go down to the next one and use the top fold as a guide for where I want my first pleat to be. And now you're going to want to either pin or um, 
clip this on both sides so that it stays even. I'm at a point where I can just do all of the folds and throw a clip or two on, but I want to show you the full process for right now just so that you can see the whole thing. Okay, so now we have fold number one, okay? Okay, we're gonna do the same thing. We're going to grab the very next fold and just fold it up a little bit. And again, pin a little bit, meaning approximately half an inch. And we're going to do another one. Same thing, pinch where you have the nice crease. And fold it up. And depending on how long these pieces are, you might be there with three pleats and you might need four. And since these pleats I have fairly close together, I'm actually just going to add a fourth right down at the bottom. You know how many times I've poked myself with pins in the last <laughs> three weeks? A lot, you guys. Okay. So now we have our beautiful even pleats. You can go ahead and iron this flat if you want. And I managed to put all of my little succulents upside down on this one. Um, you'll note that my pleats are folded up as to the top of the mask relation. Some people say they need to be folded down. When the mask is actually being worn, I really don't think it makes that much of a difference because the pleats aren't close, so it's not like anything's getting caught in them. But some people will say, oh, it's proper for them to be down. Eh, it's up to your discretion. Okay, so now to cut out a step, we don't need to make a seam along the edge yet. Let's attach these suckers first. So we're just going to line up to the top and the bottom and put a pin towards the middle of the mask to hold it together just so that it's out of the way. Do the same thing at the bottom. And if you folded your pleats properly, this should match exactly the pleated part of your main mask piece. Okay, I'll show you this before I sew it up. Okay, here's what we've got now. So we have our pleated piece here and I've attached the side channel piece. And now what we're going to do is we're going to sew a seam from here to here on both sides. Once I have it down, once I have my presser foot down, I just pull all four of my pins because my hand can control and hold my pleats together. Presser foot, pull the four pins from the pleats, and go ahead and just sew that straight seam. Sometimes that little folded edge wants to get caught, and push it back under. 
make sure it doesn't escape from you. Okay, now we have our seams here that are holding all of our lovely pleats together. And if you've put this on from the front, I'm gonna show you here to get a nice clean product. We can pull out these four pins from the sides now. Okay, so this is the front and you don't want a seam like running away from you over here, right? So what we want to do is when we fold this into a little channel, I'll show you how to do that here. Okay, I'll, I'll explain in a second. So now we have two little wings. Here's the inside of our mask. And what you're going to do is you're going to fold the edge so that we end up with no raw edges and then fold that over our pleated area. And then we're just going to sew a stitch, a seam here. And that encloses all of that raw edge and it also gives us a little channel to slide our elastic or whatever we're using for the um, securing device of sorts, right? Um, okay, so you want to match this up as well as you can because if you put a seam here on our inside and this has been pushed further down and this is totally just cosmetic, it does not matter at all, like in the grand scheme of things. But if this side is further down and you sew along the edge, you're gonna have a black seam like along here. So try to match those up decently. And then we're gonna go ahead and make those two seams. And here, you guys, is where you want to um, backstitch, like on this final seam. I want to make sure it's nice and secured. We're going to do the exact same thing on the other side. And if you, before I sew this up, if you find that you've sewn maybe a little bit too far in here and you have a big bulky edge, you can totally just trim that off a little bit to make sure that your channel is nice and big enough for the elastic to travel through. Okay. So now you may want to trim all of your little annoying flyaways, which I'm going to do right now. At least get them somewhat out of the way. And then we just have one more sewing step to complete for our masks. I've used these little snips so much in the last month that they're going dull. Oh, good heavens, threads everywhere. We're almost there. Do, 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 do. Okay. Threads have been annihilated. Here we are. And here is our mask. So now the last thing we need to do is insert our wire. So I'm going to straighten it back out. I just bent it to show you guys at the beginning, but normally you're going to have them already straight. And like I said, this is super important that you turn the ends or else they will just shove their way straight through the fabric when they're in the dryer. Okay. From the inside of your mask, you have this little pocket. You're going to insert the wire and get it so that it lays right at the very top of your mask. You will have to bend it a little bit for this part to get through that pocket. But then once it's in, straighten it back out. I have broken more than one needle trying to sew these buddies in. Okay, so you can't see it, but it's there, right? 
and you can feel it as you go. At first I was using like clips to hold it in place, but that's really not needed once you know what you're doing. So now we're just going to sew a straight seam from the very edge here. Don't sew through your channel or else you can't get anything in it. But sew from the very edge right here, straight across here. If your wire has slightly bigger like loops on the ends, you can either like sew down, up, across, down like that or you can sew in an arc. But the important thing is that that seam goes absolutely to the very edges here. If it doesn't, that wire will escape, I promise you. I've seen it happen more than once. Uh, it's also very important that this seam goes to the very top and same with this one, or else the same thing, those wires will actually push their way through in here and pop through, okay? So for this one, it has pretty tiny loops on the end, so I don't think I need to do anything special. You'll notice I'm using a nice dark thread too, so that you can really see the contrast. Double check that my wire is in place. Backstitch or fix. Some people use a zipper foot on this part. And that way you can get nice and close to the wire as well. I just don't bother with wanting to change my foot for just one little step. But if you want an even more finished image, you could totally use a zipper foot right here. Okay. Clip these last four. Your mask is sewn and ready to have the um, elastic inserted, which I'll show you that part too. But you can see my seam goes all the way to the edges so that we're not worried about that um, wire escaping. And now we can fit it nicely to the bridge of our nose. And then this sits, well, if I wasn't wearing my glasses, there we go. Mm -hmm. So having this nose wiring gives you a nice tight fit. Um, if the wire is fitting properly, it doesn't even fog up my glasses very much, which is really nice. Uh, we decided to go with this accordion version instead of the duckbill round version, because with the duckbill ones, although you do get a better fit, you have to have like four different sizes and we were distributing so many masks that we couldn't like worry about trying to make sure we had like specific amounts of sizes. So that's why we went with, with this. This works in this size very well over an N95 to protect it from droplets. Uh, it can be used on its own and like I said now we have this nice filter pocket where you can insert some sort of filtration media of your choice. What we've been doing is we've been ordering from filty.com and um, they're a home filter company that's now making filtration fabric for masks. Uh, and then we cut a six by six square of that filter fabric paper stuff and you can just kind of shove it right into that pocket and when it's open it fills up the whole area of your mask. Um, and that is just, it's highly effective stuff, it's really nice. Now you're going to see in a minute why we went to like all the trouble of making these side channels. So throw your elastic through there. I'm just using the safety pin. Is it faster and use less elastic to just sew it into the corners? Yes. However, you do not by any means get as good of a fit along your cheekbone. Like it stands out a little bit when you do it that way. When you put it in through a little channel, one, it's adjustable. You can untie and retie here. But also, once I get this other one in, I'll show you. And actually, I might, I'll throw this one. Meh. We'll start with the elastic. I'll show you the other option too. Okay. Stick the other elastic through, just using that pin. Tighten, overhand knot, 
you can tie it together or sorry in a square knot if you tie it just like this then you actually lose a lot of the elastic's length you lose a lot less if you just tie it this way okay i'm going to take my glasses off because it's just a little easier to get the mask on but now go like that get a wire in place And now you can see how with the elastic going through a little channel, it actually allows this to scrunch up along the side of your face. And that provides a much more secure fit, a lot less leakage when you do it this way, as opposed to tying it in, or sorry, tying it, um, sewing it into the four corners and just making a little like half circle. So that's why we went with that. And like I said, this is 11 inches. And now let me show you just the other version. I can just throw it through. So if you're using the t-shirt fabric type stuff, cotton lycra, I should have enough space to still knock this through this way, even with my elastic in. Obviously you wouldn't have both options at once. Okay, <clears throat> so just thread it through, and then you're going to make a loop at the top of the mask if you have one of these nice long pieces. <clears throat> like this. And we found this to be such a comfortable option, especially if wherever you're sending them doesn't already have ear savers that kind of hold the elastic off of the person's ears. So I'm just going to ignore the elastic and pretend it's not there. This goes over the top of the head, Ooh, like so. And then you can tighten it as needed. If you can really see, it's like right here. And then this ties behind the neck, like that. Same thing, it gives you a nice snug fit along the cheeks and our nose wire also really, really helps with leakage. I'm not saying that this would pass a fit test, but it's way better than one without the wiring and the little channels on the side. So. That is our tutorial um, from the Flathead Valley Mask Makers for a accordion style uh, fabric face mask. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, you can find us at flatheadvalleymaskmakers.org. Have a good day and be blessed.